Hey everybody, this is Mark Bunting, the lead pastor of Emmanuel Church here in Salisbury. And I want to welcome you and thank you so much for joining us for our online church platform today. It's so good to have you. Hey, listen, our mission here at Emmanuel is to engage everyone everywhere. And one of the greatest ways that you can help us do that is by participating with the online chat today. We have our eChurch volunteers ready to pray for you, uh, ready to talk with you, ready to see how we can best connect with you. So make sure you participate on the online experience today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great experience. standing. We're going to jump right into God's word. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 34. It's a pretty familiar passage. I hope you had a great Christmas. And if you didn't, you're still here. See, the difference between a bad Christmas and a good one is you're here. That means it was a good one. Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, it'll be on the screens. I think we have the um, King James Version, you know, the old school version. We're going to read from that this morning. Here, here it goes. Verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Here's where I want you all together. We're going to read this verse 6 together. It says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Verse number 7, The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that feared him, and delivered them. This is where we're going to camp this, this morning on verse number 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. This morning, the, the name, the title of the sermon is called, O Taste and See. O Taste and See. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we need your help not just as a people here at Emmanuel, but everywhere. We're so grateful for what you've done, bringing us through the holiday season almost through Christmas. And Lord, as we look to the new year, I pray that we'll fix our eyes on you, for you are our help. Our help cometh from you. So Lord, this morning, I pray that the words that I speak will be of you and not of myself, and that they will fall and land on good ground in your people's hearts. In Jesus' name. Well said, amen. amen. You may be seated. So, in my time here at Emmanuel, it's been about 20 months now. It's been a pretty fun ride for Tiff and myself and but today's message is a little different. We're used to high energy with Pastor Mark, and we're used to um, him and I both drink coffee a lot. I thought I'd drink more than him, but that's not true. He drinks about a pot or two a day, and I drink about three or four cups a day, big difference. And so when I was looking over, asking God what to speak this morning, the title, O Taste and See, came to me from out of the book of Psalms and David. A lot of people can relate to David, and I believe you can too this morning. David was not a perfect person. He had his issues, just like I do, and if you're honest, you do too. 
but the Lord loved David. Can you say amen? So this morning, the title, Taste and See, um, I'm a very picky eater. If you ever want my opinion on food, don't ask if you don't want the truth. If you invite me to your house and you say, Ted, is the food good? If it's really, if it's not good, I'm going to tell you it's terrible. (laughs) You know, in church, we're not supposed to lie. So that was actually the truth. Tiff has a, uh, used to look at me and just shake her head, go, don't, please don't ask him. <laughs> but the truth is, I love food, and I'm sure you do too. I, I mainly eat all seafood and some eggs. I don't eat, you know, the good ribs and the steak anymore. I don't eat chicken. I mainly eat all seafood. And I love a good crab cake. I'm from Annapolis, and we're snobs, and yes, I admit it, and I'm on the Eastern Shore now, but we're still snobs, and I love crab meat. I love pure crab meat. I don't like a whole lot of breading in my food because I can't eat gluten, so bread has you know, gluten in it unless you get the breadless, you know, the, the, the gluten-free uh, uh, breadcrumbs, and so I'm really picky about what I like to eat, and on our anniversary, Tiff and I, we usually go to a place called Chart House. It's in Annapolis. It's a pretty decent restaurant a meal for two might cost you $150 and they make special crab cakes just for me I go there and I said I want the I want a gluten-free crab cake and it's pure crab meat and somehow they get that thing to stay together and when you bite into it it's just amazing I'm getting hungry already (laughs) but this morning I'm not asking you to taste of the natural food. I'm asking you to taste of something that is sustaining you more than natural food, and that's the Spirit of God. David is talking about, he had an experience in 1 Samuel chapter 21. David, um, at the time, he had already killed Goliath. And um, he's actually on the run from Saul, who was trying to kill him. He runs into a priest by the name of Ahimelech. And Ahimelech is a priest, and he sees David, and he kind of su- catches David off guard. And David doesn't have any sword. He doesn't have any weapons with him. And David says, hey, you know, do you have any type of weapons? And uh, Ahimelech said, uh, no, the only thing I have is this, this gigantic sword. And the sword was the, belonged to a man named Goliath, who you have already killed. You're more than welcome to have the sword, David. So David took the sword because he was trying to protect himself. He didn't have any gear, and he was on the run from Saul. Well, while he was on the run from Saul, he got invited to the king's uh, table house, if you will. And David did not have the sword with him. But somebody recognized David and said, aren't you the one that uh, killed Goliath? And, uh, you know, they say that Saul killed, you know, a thousand, but you killed 10,000. And David remembered this. And when David got before the king, David (laughs) began to act like a madman. Something took over his body. Because if this didn't happen, David would have been, he would have gotten killed. The Lord delivered David and allowed him to escape from where he was because the king would have killed him. So in Psalms 34, David is remembering what God did for him and he's remembering that God allowed him to escape. And so in Psalms 34, he praises God. He, he extols God. He, he gives God glory for just bringing him through that difficult season or that period in his life. If I were to look out in the audience today, I bet you there are difficult seasons in your own life. If you haven't had one, as my mother would say, live long enough and you will have one. This morning, there are three points I want to talk to you about. Three points. The first point is that you need to, we as a people need to taste the things of God. Some of us in this room, instead of tasting the things of God, we're tasting the things that are not of God. 
And it gets real quiet when we have a message like this because it's a lot of self-reflecting on our own selves. See, the things of God are found in Scripture. You know, COVID has taught us one thing, that we need each other. Whether black or white, green or yellow, can you say amen? We need each other. We serve the same God. God is no respect of person. God doesn't favor color. God doesn't favor gender. Come on, somebody, say amen. God doesn't favor any of those things, but what God does favor is his people. And so when you have a taste of God, you actually know, you begin to know who he is. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Someone say self-control. Against such there is no law. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. That's called tasting Jesus, tasting what God has for you. Instead of tasting the things that, that get us, I don't know, angry, instead of tasting the things that tell us to um, turn on pornography, or instead of tasting the things that allow us to have, mm, I don't know, anger attitudes and, and, and want to um, say things to people that we shouldn't say, how about we taste the things that are of, of God? See, as Christians, we, sometimes we forget that we're human. But see, you know who doesn't forget that? The world. They know that we're human. And so there are things in our life that we need to clean up. There are attitudes that we have that are not of God. There are some ways that we have how we treat our spouses that just aren't right. How we treat our kids. What we say to people when we're on the telephone. And I'm guilty of that myself. As Pastor Mark confessed to you a couple weeks ago, I've got a confession myself. I think it was a couple weeks ago, maybe two, I was calling a company, won't say their name, and the lady, the gentleman got me so fired up on the phone. I was so hot. I was so mad. I was trying to get a point across to him that, hey, look, um, this should not have happened. You billed me incorrectly. How many ever talk to a customer service person and they just, they, they, they give you the script and I can't stand the script. I can't stand the script. And I said, sir, could you stop reading your script and just talk to me? And he kept giving me the script and I said, what the beep? I said it, I said it. Why are you doing this? Okay, so pause. For those of you that are judging me, judge not me before you judge yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel judgment coming on. I'm just letting you know that that's, uh, uh, I'm confessing my sins, right? But I was so upset, and I, I said, the, I, it just came out. But it didn't make a difference to the guy. He kept reading the script. <laughs> I was so upset. But the bottom line is, that day was a rough day. And we're human. But that doesn't mean that I never tasted of Jesus. See, when you have the Holy Spirit, it'll, it'll let you know, hey, Theodore, that was wrong. Did you know that I actually went back and called that guy back and said, man, I'm so, I had his name and extension and everything. I called him back, and you know what he did? He read from the same script. <laughs> the same script. Almost got me to say the same word again anyway, but I didn't. Mm, Jesus. I've got to stop confessing to it right now. Okay, point number two. See the move of God in your life. People, uh, as we develop as Christians and as we say we serve God, there should be some fruit along the way into serving God. We should be able to see the move of God in our life. See, we, we like to um, say we serve God, but at the end of the day, do we see any movement in our life? 
is there any signal that God is with us? In the pandemic, a lot of church people lost their minds. How do you know? Because I heard a lot of them. Walking away from their spouses, walking away from their jobs. In the book of John chapter 4, 27 through 30, it says the following. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman, but no one asked. What do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her, leaving her, to, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. I'm referring to the woman at the well. She had five husbands, and she was doing some other stuff that she should not have been doing. But the Lord met her at the well, and he changed her life, and she could then see the move of God in her life. This morning, the question for you is, do you see the move of God in your life? See, we can look great. We can, a lot of you have got great jobs, and I praise God for that, and and, and well-educated, but don't let the world fool you. You need Jesus. And all of you that have Jesus know someone that needs him. Why not say something? The move of God is, is, is sometimes we look for these big things like, God, I want you to come out of the sky. I want you to drop something from a tree. But sometimes he talks in a small voice to us. And it's not our conscience, it's the Holy Spirit telling us something. For those of you that are seeking relationships, when you wait on God, he'll provide and send the right person to you. For those of you that are in a relationship that is wrong, the Lord will let you know it's time to exit that relationship. The same way the Lord came to the woman at the well and changed her life is the same God that we serve today that will change ours see this is all part of tasting and seeing God. see when you taste God you get a, a, a just a, a, sim a simple taste of him then you begin to see him and then once you begin to see him my next point is you begin to trust him it all goes in that order you taste him you see him and then you trust him you don't trust him first because you don't know him but once you taste him then you begin to know him and then you begin to Trust him. So you begin to see, taste, and trust. My last point, point number three, and then guess what? We're going to be done. Trust the word of God. Jeremiah 29 and 11. I'm sure the church people know this verse by heart. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. If we could get that in our heads, well, not you, if I could get that in my head, I'd be a lot better off than I was earlier. How many of you ever want to do your own thing? Don't raise your hand. I know all of you do. <laughs> but when you do your own thing, you typically go awry. But when you follow God, things work out. We're about to take a hard right this morning. COVID took a lot of people from us. Some of us, even today, are holding on to things that we need to let go of. Cameras, if, you, if, I, if, you, if I lose you, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna go on the floor. We're four or five days from 2022. Let me ask you this. Would you want to carry the baggage of 2021 into 2022? 
would you like to lose the, the aftertaste of sin today? For some of you, you have you've got bad anxiety. For some of you, COVID has done a, a number on your own thoughts in your mind. For some of you, including myself, you've lost loved ones in 2021, and you'll never get them back. For some of you, you've lost income. For some of you, you've, you're in a bad relationship. For a lot of us, it's a mental health problem. This morning, I'm going to invite you, whether at your seats or you can come to the altar, let's not take the same taste that's not of God into 2022. This morning, this is a time as we like to say, is to get right with God. Well, uh, Pastor, I'm already right with God. You keep thinking that. Everybody's got something that they're dealing with. The loss of a spouse is tremendous. The loss of a child. If you're watching online, it's the same thing. Why take 2021 into 2022? Well, Pastor, it's gonna, the clock is going to change anyway, so what good is it for me to uh, ask God for help? Because you've tried everything else and it hasn't worked. Why not give him a shot? And if you know Jesus this morning, you know what, what's right and what's wrong. You know that the sin that may be in your life, because I have my own, it's time to unload it this morning. See, this is not a jump up and down, make you feel good message. If you don't like it, blame Jesus because he's the one that gave it to me. Let's not take our crap into 2022. Let's deal with it. So this morning, for the next few minutes, you can do it in your seats or you can kneel at the altar, kneel at your pew. We're going to take care of business this morning with God. We're going to ask God for forgiveness for the attitudes. We're going to ask God for forgiveness for the partisanship that we allow the media to infiltrate our hearts with. And don't say that hasn't happened because we are human. It has. And if you don't admit it, I admit it for myself. It has penetrated my heart on certain things. The racism or reverse racism, whatever you want to call it. It has penetrated people's hearts. The, the actually family structure, the fight that you had on the way here with your spouse. Let's take some time and ask God for total forgiveness. Clean slate it. Can we do that this morning? Can we do business with God? Don't care who's looking at you. It's just you and God. Someone's marriage is in this room, is on bad ground. share this with you. Just recently, recently I lost my oldest nephew. He was 28. About 10 days ago. And you know what I wish the most? that I could go back and tell him this again.
no one suspected that he was not going to make it. Nobody suspected that he was going to die. I have a friend who helped me through that. Tiff and I struggled, and we still do, even today. 28 is way too young to pass. I'm a pastor, and he, he knew the gospel, but I didn't tell it to him enough. So you can live it all you want, but if you don't open your mouth and tell about the goodness of Jesus to somebody who needs it, what good is it if we look good on the inside, but the, well, the outside, but the inside is rotten? How many are sitting in here feel rotten? There are days I don't feel like serving God. There are days that I question him myself, and I've learned one thing big. God is, too, he can answer any question you got. He's bigger than whatever life questions that you got. It's 9.50, and we're going to be out of here by 10 o'clock. But could you give God a, a few minutes of just talking to him, of repenting? And if you're perfect, go to God on behalf of somebody else. Your parents, your cousins, your uncles, your nieces, your nephews, your school teacher. They need it. But if you've got some serious junk that you're dealing with, please don't take it out of here with you. Don't take it out. Leave it here. For some of the young people, peer pressure is out there. Are you in the right relationship? Are you in a loving home? Parents, do we take our frustrations out on our kids because we're upset or angry? Do we speak out of turn? When's the last time you told your wife that you love her or your husband that you love him? We gotta change some things today. Can you say amen? We're gonna pray. The altar's open, you can stay in your seats, you can come in the front, but we're gonna be this way for the next few minutes. to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness 
God, I don't know what each prayer was for you, Duke. God, you've met us. You've heard our cries. You've heard our praises, God. And you've spoken to each of us in ways uniquely crafted for us. God, I pray that as we leave, as we separate, separate today, God, God, that we are reminded of the borrowed breath that we have in you. God, may we never forget to praise you for who you are, praise you for the things that you've done, for the ways in which you've picked us up and turned us around, God, the ways in which you've made us new, the ways in which you've made evil into good, God. God, we love you. We thank you for the things that you've done. We thank you for the things that you are doing and for the ways in which you have yet to move and speak, God. The ways in which you are to come. Be with us, God. God, I pray these things in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for this special experience. Um, if today's message or today's time impacted you, um, we want to know. So please text the message Ease Decision um, to 77411. Pastor Josh and his team would love to get up with you, love to talk about um, your experience today and some next steps in your faith journey. If you are here for the first time, I want to encourage you to stop by our guest tent on your way out. We have a special gift for you just to say thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. You guys are dismissed. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our eChurch Online. We're so grateful that you took the time to join us today. If you made a decision for Christ or need prayer, want to know just a little bit more about the church or your relationship with God, we'd love to connect with you. If you could text that number on the bottom of the screen, someone will be reaching out to you to see how we can best serve you. Again, thank you so much for joining us today.